Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Aged Out Reacts for the DCI 2023 season. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Fantini, and with me, as always, is Evan Morrill. And the time has finally come. We finally are able to do the Cavaliers. We got the video we've been waiting for uh, from the Atlanta Regional. Um, it's A1 Media. Puts out phenomenal quality stuff. Link to the original videos in the video description. Go to that channel. Watch the original video. Subscribe to that channel. Uh, they're doing great work for the community and stuff. Clearly have a love of the activity like all of us do. So on top of that, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think about the Cavaliers. We think they're freaking throwing down this year. And the scores and judges pretty much agree. But we'll get into all that at some point. Um, check out the podcast on all podcast services. Facebook, Instagram, never miss an update. Aged out podcast, patreon.com to support us financially. Uh, I think we actually just got a few recent patrons on Patreon. I'm going to double check the names nice. in the next video. We'll shout you all out. We greatly appreciate that. Or Absolutely. Uh, even easier, you can hit the join button here on YouTube. Only option for that is 99 cents a month, something real simple uh, to support us if you would like. We'll be at finals in a week and change. Friday, the Saturday, 10, semis 11th, and finals. 12th, whatever that is, 10, the, whatever Friday and Saturday is. Yeah. 11th, 12th, 10th, 11th. So. Yeah. Like, but like always, feel free to say hi in the lot. We'll be there. We love meeting you all in, in the wild and everything. I think it's super cool that we all love this activity so much. And it's <laughs> awesome how it brings so many different people together, which is super cool every time it happens. And uh, we get to meet all of you all. So Cavaliers, they're very good. Yeah. Watch the first half of this video too. The, uh, I actually watched just the exercises earlier today because it was so refreshing. They are very simple. Uh, they're just getting their ears and their hands dialed in. And you know what? The balance and consistency kind of speaks for itself. So, yep. The quality so. is is there. And uh, like we said, the judges seem to agree. They're kind of, they've kind of won both regionals by three tenths, which is a statement, as we said on our like mid season podcast. So, uh, oh, yeah. So nobody else complains again. Hold. And I kind of like having the can open in the videos and the podcast, too. So, all right. Let's go. Let's check out some cavies. Great quality right off the bat. Just rolls, accent tap, differentiation. Yeah, bass. Some quality downstrokes going on. Nice. Great bass lead into that phrase. Classic kind of cavalier. Just like big unison. Sniffing a haircut vibe. Oh, great roll. <laughs> great freaking roll. So I'm actually going to turn the volume up a little bit and pause this. About five clicks. There we go. Um, yeah. Just crazy. That phrase wasn't technically the most demanding thing in the world, but the quality is just clean wins. We've said it on here so many times. At the end of the day, you've got to play clean. Consistently clean. Consistently clean. Like, yeah, you could pop one one random night, but this year they've masterfully Mac – and, Mac and team have masterfully picked their spots, I feel – like is the way to describe this uh, percussion book this year. They've got For some sure. moments that... It's a that, finite summer, so, I mean, you have to, like, hone in on what you got to present. So, let's go. Yep. So, even the stuff that's not crazy complicated or hard still comes off and reads really well because it's so... The sound quality is so good and the clarity is so high. Plus, their front is... I don't know a ton about front, but they're yeah. really good to me. We've heard some statements like they have the best front in DCI this summer, far and, I don't know about far and away, but we've heard people say they have the best front, who we respect and trust. Jay Bricks. <laughs> With the paws. Doesn't even use the stick clicks, just... No. Same opening statement. Yeah, like the ostinato is kind of like a classic Cavaliers vibe. Yeah, definitely. There's so many Easter eggs. I know they talked about it in the book. Tributes to years of past. Well, that's the whole theme of the show. Like, it kind of has a ton of stuff like that. Just drop the bottom out. If that doesn't warm your soul, like rolls like that, I don't know what will. Sounds like they're 
playing the same rep. Like it's yeah. Consistency. Whew, that roll again. Yeah. Great stick control at the edge there. Woo! Just moving in and out of those presses too. Adjusting the grip pressure in the fulcrum. What a quad roll. What a Spock roll. <laughs> the Spock roll was clean. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those moments for sure. And just like, you know, playing double stops. I'm not trying to like gas them up, but you know, just playing like double stops from up here and coming down as an individual with like both beads at the same time. Like it's hard to play good double stops. It really is. It's, it's harder a lot than it harder. is to play flams. Oh uh, yeah, it's probably, yeah. I'd probably agree with that. People underestimate it for sure. I remember we did that at Rhythm X one year. Ted Leaf went down the lines like everybody played double stop. People uh, did not pass the challenge. Is this the same phrase again? Yeah. Fast forward. Yeah. We're not going to watch it a third time. Yeah. Fives, hallmark of Josh Bricky. This is definitely one of those moments where they are not from the judge. I was getting ready to say. There's some Ooh, straight the, the, double stroke changes. The little four stroke though. The, yeah. Just quality, solid around work for the quads. Oh, ending in that roll. I'm back in that phrase up. I want to hear that quad segment again. We'll just start here. Yeah, I want to get those little like fours in there. We get it up. And because this is so straightforward, the sauce catches you off guard. Contrast. Dynamic contrast. Might have had a couple things on the beginning of that tap like roll, the but very, yeah, the very yeah, front of the tap first roll. couple doubles cleaned up quickly though. Just roll your eyeballs. Not like the hardest thing, but like, you know, they're not giving anything up. Not really. And again, I bet the judge is not really reading much of this. They definitely bring them up when they want to for the exposed moments, which... As we've said for like the last two years, that's kind of what... Kind of what people are doing, it's, they're playing the game. It's what the judging changes have uh, pushed people to do. Love it or hate it. There's your splits. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love Hertus. Oh, using that Spock as a, a home base, coming back to it. Again. There, we go. there it is. Yep, yep, yep. I think that was the diddle, put it up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two, the one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Two, three. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm going to pause about that quad phrase real quick in the middle of this uh, cross stick section. A lot of times. I, a lot of times, quad phrases, I feel like people try to just make them as flashy and as crazy as possible. But that was kind of almost an understated moment from a writing standpoint. 
but it well, was think- still like the way he used i don't know adam might have handed it josh i don't know if mac wrote the whole thing or mike um he just i just loved how he used the spock as a home base for like a triplet roll and then did all kinds of stuff around the drums off of it and then kept coming back to it keeping that triplet roll the same yeah it's a really delicate musical moment i think that's when they're doing that judy garland um uh, stuff i think you're right so, i think i watched them a couple nights tasty. ago on the stream it's like a it's like a tasty quad moment not just yeah. a, we're a gonna ram play all the same volume yeah well done I want to point something out that we are hyping this a lot and they're very good and I do agree they deserve to be in first place but this isn't perfect still like there was some a little bit of fuzz in the beginning a couple of triplet rolls in that phrase and a blend stuff but it's only Atlanta and there isn't a drum line this summer right now that's perfect there really isn't and especially on the move especially on the move so I don't want to I don't want this to come off as like the Cavaliers are perfect they're infallible they can't tick it's like there's ticks in this video, but they're very no, they're gonna minor. Have to get, they're going to have to continue to get better if they want to hold on to the place. Yes. If they don't keep in the upward trajectory, somebody will catch them. Boston will jump them. Uh, Blue Devils, as they continue to clean up throughout the season, will jump them. Like It it can happen for sure. Oh, yeah. But they're going to, knowing the staff and the members, left. they're going to keep working. I don't expect them to plateau. The junkyard dogs, as uh, Josh, Josh like says. Josh says. and drum phrase we'll jump forward a little bit i'm gonna play the same phrase again they might go farther they've done that before in this video we'll just start here and see what happens a little tap roll just in there though it's a better rep Some of that triplet roll pair that'll work in there was cleaner on this rep. Gotta get the reps in. The mm-hmm. lot reps. I love how chill this lot is, though. It's just, like, so, like, all right, yeah. we're here. We're, we're drumming. I mean, that's kind of their MO this summer. It's, like, we've talked to Josh a little bit throughout tour and stuff, and just, like, they're just working. They're not trying to do anything over the top. Hype like crazy. They're just working. Nice cold attack. Nice. Woo! <laughs> Great control at the edge still. One little like one little thing, thing, but yeah, on the grandma dude, that, stuff. That gut roll was pure. This must be. I'll pause. Like this must be the summer of the jump to the edge because they have one, cadets have one, and um, I think BD's got one in the middle of one of their snare features. And yes, we did see that comment on the YouTube video that Mike loves jumps to the gut edge. And yes, I do. Dude, yeah, especially when they push front. Yep. Oh, did you hear the bass line under that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, everybody's just going to hype that. I mean, that's just its a crowd pleaser. Just the consistency of those rolls in that little segment. They do the little kind of rhythmic and uh, tempo with chill. I mean, that phrase kind of had everything. You had flam vocabulary, you had stick tricks, you had rhythm changes, you had hand speed changes. There were there were a few random little buzz presses in there, uh, forcing fulcrum pressure changes. Like flam vocabulary. What like. more do you want in a feature? And I bet that is fun as hell to play. It's as also, a snare drummer. Um, 
It's also Macintosh was texting me too. He threw in a kind of an homage to Tom Float in there. The stuff that happens after the claw, where they're doing like the drum to drum, the chill. Yeah. And they do like the six tuplet on the other drum. Um, was from uh, one of his favorite Tom Float lines. I think he said it was 1980 Spirit. Um, hmm. So he hadn't really talked about it a ton, but another just little Easter egg in the show there. Shout out to uh, uh, the legend Tom Float. For sure. Great bass support through all that pair of little stuff. If you followed Cavaliers through the years, a lot of this stuff is just very yeah. satisfying. Yeah, callbacks. And I hope we get to watch this with Mac, with Mike McIntosh, like we did after last year or the year before, to have him point out all the Easter eggs in this, because I know there's a lot. Oh, yeah. I bet you they do that. I want him to, because I want to hear that snare phrase again. This is going to be one of our longer reaction videos, but I don't really care. It's all right. It's a long video. It's long, long content. Yeah. Uninterrupted. Mm-hmm. Great singles. Mm -hmm. paired a little better on the grandma all that time great grandma all that time all the bass accenting yeah oh for the bass under that too I mean, there's still fuzz in there. Yeah, it's that's so hard to clean. This part. Yeah. Kind of a tribute. I mean, those rolls are in there. Oh, yeah. So, well, I'll wait. So I would argue, we pointed out, we've called a couple ticks, it's not perfect, but I think something that is making up for that at this point in the season a little bit is the qu quality that is there when it is perfect. And it's it's in there way more often than not. There's not a whole lot of ticks popping out here, and every tick is like really small. Somebody will tick barely an attack of something, or the first double or two in a roll, or whatever. But because There's the quality like egregious, exactly, they're at the point where the baseline is so good that any little <laughs> thing sounds like it slaps you in the face, pretty much. Which is a great place to be by Atlanta to not peak early, if you ask me. But right. the quality I mean, is definitely helping teams. Them. There's definitely teams out there playing more notes, which mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Boston plays more notes. I'll more say it right now. Quantity doesn't always relate to like I guess a content boost. Yeah, uh, I know I've heard several judges say that on here. Just texting around places just like so but they definitely choose the spots when they're presented to be like all right here's what we can mm -hmm. do so yeah i think so one more yeah there's a there's yeah. one rep in here it's like a uh, two minutes left in this video i think so although i don't know if there's many people out there front the front notes like they do some stuff that catches me off guard yeah like, even my naive front ensemble Dude. Bass. 
to like that lick. Back up, back up, back up. We'll back up. Yeah, we'll back so up. So like that lick, like, yeah, like the first diddle. Like, yep. you could tell someone just like pinched or didn't come off the space, right? But then the sec, like the rest of it, just immediate instant clarity. Immediate, so. Immediately immaculate after the one little tick. And that's the kind of stuff where they're at at this point in the season. When this video was taken two days ago? Yeah, two days ago. Right. Slam work in the with the roll satchel straight. Mm -hmm. That's from 2011. I was gonna say I've heard this before. That bass run. They're not done yet. Someone says. I'm going to play the bad double stop in there, though. Yeah, there were, uh, hey, double stops, like we said, not uh, the easiest thing in the world. Contrary to, there's a little time left. Did they do that again? Let me see what the, they, 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 if they just it. repeat that, we'll just. They probably get another rep. Leave it alone. Let's see if they get that first double. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Got it that time. Yep. Yeah, that bass run is from... Yep. 11. 2011. I will never forget... All right, we'll just end it there. I will never <laughs> forget sitting in front of that 2011 Cavies line. Like, I didn't know Mike McIntosh at the time. I was between my drum corps summers there, and I, I actually, I think I have the four only four like finals lot videos of that drum line like that's still one of the best lot experiences i've ever been in <laughs> i knew dan shack i marched blue stars with mike royer who was on the end of that snare line like it was a great lot all right 2011 was great yep. but they're great this year so that's what matters they're right now great. i think they're gonna win drums they're gonna they're gonna set themselves up for it it's it may be and if it'll they be do, theirs it might to be give like away historic thing to, has anyone ever won from eighth place? Are the cores in eighth right now? I should have checked know. that. I don't think anyone's won lower than sixth. It was a fandom year with Rennick, right? Yeah, 2010. Mm -hmm. They won from sixth. So I don't know if anyone's won lower than that. So someone there's let us some know in the comments. Have, there's been some groups pretty low that have like scored really high, like second, third, fourth, like mm -hmm. even like non-finalist groups, but. Um, yeah, we got second in 12, and the core was in sixth place, I think. So. so, yeah. So, it'd be historic. I think... So, I think right now, as of Atlanta, the Cavaliers and Boston are probably the two best drum lines on the aggregate, looking at what they're, what they're playing, levels of clarity. Um, I think the Cavaliers' front, from everything I've heard from my own ears and heard through the grapevine, I think their pit takes it over Bo over boston um but in terms of batter drumline land i'm gonna wait till we do our predictions to kind of yeah, line out yeah but that's so. we'll give that right now who my two my two front runners are but i think you can look at recaps that's pretty much just going with the recaps but um yeah next video we're gonna do is crown so this will be out we're recording this on july 31st it'll be out on august 1st tomorrow around lunchtime which is probably when you're watching it hopefully on august 1st or 2nd at some point and uh facebook instagram check out the podcast and all podcasts podcast services got tongue-tied a1 media go check out this, the youtube channel link to the videos in the description check out their instagram youtube all that good stuff and we will see everybody in the next one peace